Well, how exciting is this? Karina LeBlanc, Rian Wilkinson joining us here on Soccer North. Congratulations on your championship win. What a huge victory. I just want to know how you're still feeling, Rian. Um, are the emotions still high? What was it like to be crowned champion? I, I'm <laughs> incredible. Can we use words like that? But I'm I'm so tired now, but in the best <laughs> way. You know, when you're just completely depleted. Um, but watching the players have that moment on the field and being a part of giving them that was, I think, really highlighted why I wanted to be a coach. It was pretty cool. And being able to do this together, obviously the history is there with the national team. Karina, having Rian as your head coach, that also had to feel special. It it did. I mean, obviously, I, I, it's one of those things where I think at the beginning of the season, we thought of what it could be, but going through that moment and giving her the hug right after she's led this team so incredibly. And I think it's so understated the impact Reen's had as a coach, not only in the game, but for this club and the players just love her. And I think it wouldn't have been possible without her at the helm leading the team. She gets awkward when I talk about her and I love it. I'll just keep going. But yeah, I think it's been truly special. We've had some incredible moments playing for our country, but this is one of a, a new one for us in a new chapter. And it doesn't end because I know, Rian, you've got to get to player meetings here, but I do want to put up, we're going to, so Portland Thorns put up the cheeky tweet, which I absolutely love because there was an outcry, Rian, when you didn't get coach of the year. And it was, keep your coach of the year. We'll take this trophy instead. Come on, had to feel good. Well, look, it's very kind. I, I absolutely think the three that were nominated were the right ones to be nominated. Um, there was just a really... It was a good year. It was such a great year for this league and for how competitive it was. And I appreciate all the love. I um, I think it's very kind, but um, I will take the trophy. I think that that's a, a lot more of something I'll remember uh, forever than the, the coaching one. So well well earned by Casey Stoney. She, she earned that this season. Look at that, spoken like a true Canadian. But Karina, I got to ask you. Um, bye, Rian. <laughs> Karina, I have to ask you. You won with Portland as a player. That's the inaugural championship 2013. Here you are winning as a member of the front office. What's the difference between winning as a GM and winning as a player? Uh, as a GM, you have no control. <laughs> no, you know, the thing is, is that you just leave it. You have to trust and rein in the coaching staff and the players. But, um, you know, it was pretty special in the first year just because it was the beginning of the league, the NWSL, and, and we wanted to set the tone for what the Thorns could be. And, but just being in this position, being able to, you know, have a different role, it's just, it's it's truly special. I wouldn't be able to compare and say which one was more, which was better and which was worse. I'd just say they both were special for their own reasons. And I think hopefully this is what, it's it's a testament of hopefully more to come, but doing things like Reen said to the team every time, like we want to win, but we want to do it in the right way. And I think that's what the team's been able to do. Um, and hopefully we're able to build a bit more of uh, like a, a dynasty here. There's been a lot of tradition with the Thorns, but what we can do moving forward um, with female leadership, doing things that hopefully we've said to the players that they replace us and we continue that legacy with having former players because Rian was a former player here as well too. So mm -hmm. having former players step into positions to help lead the team and the organization forward. Listen, already that's a record third title. So I would say you're on your way to <laughs> having that dynasty stamp. But here's the thing. You're an OG, right? Playing in the league in the beginning. You've seen the growth. You've seen... The TV numbers grow, the coverage of it, prime time, you've seen the attendance grow, first ever CBA, salaries going up. I mean, what has it meant to you to be a part of the growth of this league? Yeah, I mean, you saw 915,000 people tuned in for the game. I mean, that's huge. And I think it's a testament to all the players that are playing. It's a testament to the whole organization. It's a testament to the league that they want to keep moving things forward. But I think it's only at the beginning. I think the future of women's soccer is so... In, like I'm so excited by it. I'm so inspired by what it can become. But most importantly, I think this is a, a new beginning again. And I think if we keep evolving and keep it grow, growing, you talk about the CBA, you talk about I mean the attendance, um, ownership. I think it's just um, it's a testament of what's been done. But more exciting, what really can happen in the future. Listen, when we worked the Olympics together, I thought that was a beginning of a beautiful broadcast friendship. And then you <laughs> left me, but it's okay, because you're a champion, I my miss friend. you. I miss you, Andy. I miss CBC. Who knows? <laughs> maybe I'll be back, you know? Woohoo! Oh, no, we appreciate I love you, you guys. taking the time. <laughs> Thanks for always covering our sport. I love you guys. If you enjoyed this content, don't miss anything that we're putting out on Soccer North. Be sure to download the CBC Gem app, head to the App Store, and hey, it's free.